In a previous video, I showed you how to learn a normal distribution from data in a GeneRISC. And the example data that I used was the quarterly annualised UK growth rate data leading up to the 2008 financial crash. During that period, growth was good and steady, rarely going below about 1.5% and rarely going above 4%. So it turned out that it was a very good fit for a normal distribution and the normal distribution that it learnt was the one I can show you here. It had a mean of 2.96 and a variance of 0.56. So that's the learnt distribution. And once this is calculated, you can see that that's a fairly narrow fin-tailed distribution. And I just want to show you how I've set the graph properties on this in a GeneRISC. If you go into the graph defaults, I'm using continuous axis, I'm not using percentiles, I'm just displaying the full range from, in this case, from minus 10 to 10. And I'm also displaying the upper and lower percentiles of 5 and 95% respectively. And so you can see that when I hover over this, it shows me what the summary statistics are, the mean of 2.96, etc. It tells me that the lower 5% percentile is 1.729, which means that there's only a 5% probability that that distribution will be below 1.729. And there's only a 5% probability that it will be above 4.19. So that's a fairly narrow distribution. And because that distribution is so thin toweled any attempt to base future predictions on it would have failed to capture what might have happened. Indeed, with this model, a growth rate in the next quarter of less than 5% is essentially impossible, which you can see just here. And even just getting the next month at less than zero negative growth rate is highly unlikely, 0.004% probability. Whereas growth rate between 1.5% and 3.5% is, of course, very likely because that's where the mass of the distribution is. So how can we build a Bayesian network that accommodates the much greater uncertainty required for rare event prediction? Well, one way is to use an adaptation of this model. So I'm going to switch to this model here. And before I explain what it is, and how I developed it, you can see that this is a much longer tailed, thicker tailed, non-symmetric model, which actually much better reflects the longer term data, which incorporates all of the data from the 1950s up until today. And the way we've done that is to condition the distribution for annualized growth on different types of economic conditions, which for simplicity I've called boom, normal, uncertain, and recession. Before I show you how to build this part of the model, let's just look at how this distribution is defined here. So what you can see is that we're going to assume that in normal periods, growth is typically around 2% with a variance of about 0.6. So that's most of the periods. I think about 65% fit that distribution. But then you've got periods of boom where in a particular period, you might have a much higher growth rate of around 5%, but with a higher variance, 15. And recession, which is where you might get typically a series of periods in which the growth rate is on average minus 3, but again, with quite a bit of variance when that happens. I've also defined an uncertain one where there's a lot more uncertainty about the distribution compared with the normal and where the mean is zero. So there's the model. You can see that there's a 5% probability of getting a growth rate less than minus 2.9 and also a 5% probability of getting a growth rate above 3.8. What I'll do now is show you how I actually built this model. So first of all, I'm going to create a new Bayesian net object over here by selecting new object, double clicking to open it. So I'll start with a continuous node for the growth. So let's just call that growth. I'm going to define a discrete node for the economic conditions. And this time I want it to be labeled rather than Boolean. And therefore I can now define the states as anything I like. We're gonna call them boom normal, uncertain, and recession. 
and I'm going to link these. And when I go into the definition of the no probability table, by default, it's just a normal distribution, but of course I want to condition it. So I'll go up here, choose partitioned expression, because that's going to condition it on this economic condition node. And using the values that we saw before, I can double click to select any number, any type of distribution, but I'm going to, for simplicity, choose the normal distribution. And we said that in a boom, we were assuming average growth rate of five, but of course quite a big variance, 15. I can copy these across here if I want them all, if I'm, since I want them all to be normal, it's slightly easier to do it this way. And I just change the parameters. Apply this. Okay, there's just a couple of things I want to do to make the graph look nice. We'll go into the properties. Remember the graph defaults, we have to change that. Switch off the default, which will show just the percentiles. And we'll say minus 10 to 10. Apply that. And when I run the model and open the graphs, make this a bit bigger. This looks a bit different to the previous one, and that's because I accepted the default probabilities for economic conditions, which wrongly assumes they're all equal. We can go in and change those to what we know the priors for those are. So we're assuming that 5% of the time is boom, 5%, let's say, is recession, normal 65% of the time, uncertain the rest. And when I run it again, we get to exactly the distribution that we saw before. I can also do some other things here. I can do some nice things like easily look at a number of periods of growth. So I'm simply going to copy this node, copy and then paste. I can also do control, I can also do a control V, it's the same thing. So now I compute these. At the moment they're all the same. So at the moment we're assuming we're in a period where the current growth rate is averaging at just under 1.4. Let's suppose that we get a period where there's a growth of minus two. That's just observed a single period. Then already that's clearly very unlikely to be normal. So we're moving into the uncertain recession period. It, interesting enough, it could be a boom because in boom periods, you get these wild fluctuations. So it's more likely to be a boom than normal at this point with that sudden change. We now see, let's say minus three. Still believing that they're in this uncertain period, which is why it's become a little bit more like a normal distribution, but with a much longer tail. But if in this period we now get to say minus five, then we're now much more likely to be in a recession, and there's the predicted distribution for the next period. If you enjoyed this video, please check out the many others that you'll find on my YouTube and Rumble channels. Goodbye.